mother is here with us Amen. as well Amen. on tonight. Um, we're going to continue to deal with our theme, looking at it. Amen. Uh, but on tonight, I wanna I wanna deviate from Second Chronicles 34, and I wanna look at a passage of scripture. Uh, and you don't have to stand for it. Thank you for wanting to honor it. Uh, it's honored whether you stand or not. Uh, but tonight I want to I want to look at Exodus chapter 17. Um, for in Exodus chapter 17, I understand that I sit amongst theologians, and I understand that there is and there was no church in the Old Testament. Amen. Uh, the church didn't come until Jesus came. Amen. Amen. Uh, prior to the Mosaic Law, and once the Mosaic Law came into fruition, they had what was called the Tabernacle, and then the Temple. Yeah. Once God raised up judges, He raised up kings, uh -huh. and those kings they had temples. And so, yeah. Exodus chapter 17 is going to be our springboard tonight as we continue to look at this theme: uh, restoring God's, restoring God's church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, if you notice on the outline, we began uh, our lecture on last evening by, first of all, defining uh, what the word restore really means. Um, and, and we have it here again. And Miriam Webster's dictionary defines the word restore to mean give back, number yeah, one, yeah, to give yeah. back and or to return. Um, secondly, it means to put or to bring back into existence or use. And then thirdly, it means to bring back to or put back into a former or original state. And our preacher for last night uh, described what restore and restoration means uh, explicitly as he talked about that man with the withered hand. Amen. Yeah. And as God restored yeah. him. And so uh, on tonight, if you would, I'll read a few verses from Exodus chapter 17. After I have read, uh, we'll proceed on with our outline. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In Exodus chapter 17, I'm going to start reading at verse number 8, and I'll read a few of the concluding verses. It says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. Can I read that in the Emmanuel translation? And it came to pass when Pastor Jones held up his hands that Emmanuel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and her stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Amen. Amen. The grass with the flower there faded away, but the word of our God yeah, shall stand yeah. forever. And so, if you would turn your attention to our outline, um, tonight when we look at Exodus chapter 17, we discover that Moses is in an issue dealing with the Amalekites who was a constant thorn in the side of Israel. And they come to an interesting place and it's the place that they come to that really beckons for our attention on tonight. Uh, so I have an outline that continuing with our theme for the week, Restoring God's Church, that we emphasized on last evening that God is very much so in the restoring business. Okay, and God wants us to be con concerned about what concerns Him uh, as His people. And that is, beloved, restoration. All right? uh, we know that to be true because with many of the miracles that Jesus performed,
perform, <clears throat> excuse me, with many of the miracles that Jesus performed on others uh, and the maladies that they had after he restored them physically. He more times than not reconciled them unto himself yeah. spiritually. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. When you read about the miracles that Jesus performed, more times than not, after he healed them, more times than not, Jesus reconciled them yeah. unto himself yeah. Yeah. spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. You notice I have Mark chapter 5, that woman that had the issue of blood. Right. Yeah. The text says that she bled for 12 long years. Yeah. And instead of getting better by going to man's physician, the text says she grew worse. Yeah. But it wasn't until she came and she made her way to Jesus' hymn. Yes, sir. And upon her touching him, his hymn, Mark says that Jesus felt virtue leave him. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible says when she stood there, when she was kneeling there on her knees, and as Jesus beheld this woman, the text says that she began to confess to Jesus all about her life. And the text says immediately after she told him all about her, the Bible says that Jesus looked at her and said one word that clarifies and gives us greater grace to understand that God is into not only restoration but reconciliation. This Jesus called this woman daughter. And, and, and yeah, yeah, he called her daughter to let her know I didn't just come to make you well, I came to make you whole. So, so God is in the rest restoration business yes, and the reconciliation yes, business. Even when you read Acts chapter 3, that man that was laying at the gate begging arms of those that went in. The Bible says and lets us know that he was asking for something to put in his cup. But Peter looked upon him and said, silver and gold have we none. But such as I have, give I the in the name. Rise up and walk. And the Bible says that he went into the temple, yeah, yeah. leaping, worshiping, and praising ah. God. Yeah. Yeah. So God not only wants to restore us, but God wants to reconcile yeah. 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 us. Yeah. Like God wants us to be positionally right with him. Yeah. Which happens when when that our place is, he wants us to be positionally right with him. Uh, when restoration and reconciliation takes place. Uh, as, a result, as a result of the fall of, of all of humanity in Genesis chapter 3, it stands to reason, y'all, that our places of worship, which are not limited to our places of worship, but because we're in the business of restoring God's church, it stands to reason as a result of the fall in Genesis chapter 3 that many of our places of worship are the way they are because the people are the way they are. Our churches are the way they are because the people that go there are the way they are. chapter 6 verse 1 yes. he says brethren if a man be overtaken in a fall yes. he says ye which are yes. spiritual yes. he says restore he says yes. he, he, if a man be overtaken in a fall ye which are spiritual yes. Yes. restore such a one in the spirit of meekness considering thyself yes. lest thou also be yes. tempted yes. It has to take place within us first, internally, before it ever will be manifested externally. 
And, and so we also stated on last evening that God has a plan for his church. Yeah. And, and y'all, if he's going to visit us as he said he would, yeah. then those within the sacred place called sanctuary yeah. must carry out the plan yeah. of the divine owner. Yes. Because I said to y'all last night that this is God's business, yeah. but God has made us proprietors yeah. Yeah. of his work. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Amen. I can't go on my job and, and, and call it uh, and, and call shots and do that, but I, but I know what I can do because I got some authority in here. Yeah. I, I tried to tell you last night that God has given us the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. And now there's some stuff that won't happen if you don't turn the key. Yeah. Well, I have a witness in here. So, so we have, we're, we're proprietors of God's business. Yeah, yeah. And, and as we've seen in the life of Josiah on last night, who, who was who was the governing leader. Yeah. And with the people who was the leader's laity, they collectively brought God back yeah. to his respective place yeah. Yeah. by tearing down and removing that which was merely stuff that wouldn't surpass or wouldn't pass for substance. Yeah. Yeah. He, he made sure that, that, that we're going to restore the temple of God. And in doing so, they had to bring worship back to what worship was supposed to be. And, and so tonight, tonight I want to continue to deal with, with, with restoring God's church from the perspective of, from a leader's and laity perspective. Again, because as I said on last night, y'all, uh, the, the work is too much for y'all's leader to bear. It's, 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 and I, he, he, he's super gifted and multi-talented, y'all, but it's too much for him to do. I, 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 I know he's big and robust, amen, but, but y'all, it's too much work for him to do by himself. And, and so I wanted to look at Exodus 17 because it, it literally gives us a plan that the, both the leader and the laity can come together to restore God's house. This chapter 17, particularly the verses that I just read until you're hearing. The, the, the first thing that we notice about this text is that, and, and I have it, that the church, understand that the church is a place of unique importance. I, I said the church is a place of unique importance. It's a place of unique importance because when you read Exodus chapter 17, verse number 8, the Bible says they came to a place called Rephidim. And, and Rephidim was a place that symbolically spoke of the place where, where, where God wants to get, get and grab your attention. Yeah. Rephidim is symbolic of a place that you've been doing, doing so much moving and running. And I want to get you in a place where, where I can really talk to you. And, and, and let you know I have a plan for your life. And, and so when you look at it, the, that the church is a place of unique importance. It's a place of unique importance because as Dr. F stated last night, the church is where delivering and deliverances take place. Mm -hmm. And if God is going to deliver, watch this, in the church, then, then, then we must make sure that we have, we have in place the tools yeah. that's necessary to sustain them so that they don't go back out into the world to be destroyed. Yeah. Did, did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. Every church must make sure. I know we're in the business of winning souls and saving souls, but, but Jesus didn't just want us to save them. He, he wanted us to nurture them. The Bible says we must disciple them yes. because if we just give them the word without letting them know what the word will do for you, not just yeah. one time. Yeah. But, but if we let them know that God not only want to get on you, but God want to get in you. Yeah. And if we don't have the tools in the church, yeah. they going to go back out in the world and be destroyed. So we got to understand that the church yeah. is a place yeah. of unique importance. Yeah. Right. Now look at my second bullet, y'all. Secondly, y'all, 
God gives us a Moses. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. He gives us a Moses to encourage us to keep going. Watch this, keep going. And, and you can't, you can't, you can't receive that nowhere else come on, come on. than the church. Yeah. Now y'all didn't hear what I just said. Do, do you know? Do you know what Moses looked like at Emmanuel? Stand up, stand up, pastor. Stand up. church. And whether you're in the morning or see the rapid, God will give you a Moses. And he gives us a Moses to encourage us because you won't find that encouragement nowhere else. Moses comes to them. And, and, and notice what Moses does, y'all. Moses comes to them and, and, and they're stuck in a rapid deal. And notice, y'all, Moses says to Joshua in verse number nine, he says, Joshua, what I want you to do is choose out from among us me that, that they may go out and fight with Amalek. He, he, said, he said, tomorrow, watch the text, y'all. He says, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stand on top of the hill. He says, I'm going to stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. And, and, and y'all, I'm going to watch God give all of us the victory. Uh -huh. I'm going to watch God give us all the victory. I just need you to go find some men that's ready to fight. But which brings me to my second point, y'all, and that is not only is the church a place of unique interest, importance. Secondly, y'all, the church is a place of unique interest. It's a place of unique interest, y'all, because watch this. Moses picks out some folk. Because everybody in the church yeah. All right. don't come for church. church is a place of unique interest. Because can I tell you y'all what works in the what works for the city don't work for the church. What, what work for the county don't work for the church. What, what work for our what work for our, our, our local government and our, and, our, and our federal government don't work for the church. It, it doesn't matter what surrounding you in. Listen, y'all, the church is a place of unique interest. And because the church is a place of unique interest, God gives her some stuff. Watch this. That's destined to work. But the only way it's going to work is if you work. <laughs> Work, you yeah, work. Yeah, but then listen y'all listen as I, as I hasten to a close listen y'all not, not only is the church a place of, of, of unique importance uh -huh. yeah yeah not only is the church a place of unique interest uh -huh. but y'all thirdly you notice that the church offers us uh -huh. the possibility yeah, of a unique investment yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because 
because if we're in the business of restoring, yeah, all right? yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can't sow what you sow in uh -huh. here right now. Reconciliation will always be yours. Amen. 